bless us today. Glorify your name today in our lives. We have come to be comforted. We have come, O oh Lord, to be encouraged. We have come, O oh Lord, to be healed. We have come, O oh Lord, that our broken hearts shall be suited. We have come, O oh God, that there shall be deliverance so to the captives. We have come that your name alone shall be glorified. Have your way, Holy Spirit, take charge, and I cast out every forces of darkness that are not of God within the jurisdiction of my voice. I say, point of captivity in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let understanding flow to the glory of God. In Jesus Christ's most powerful name, we are praying. And shall we believe it? Amen. Amen. Let me see the heavenly blessing in Christ Jesus this morning. We run with God's word and start to your destiny is in your hands. Your destiny is in your hands. We are all here on earth for a purpose. Everybody who's on earth is here for a purpose. Accomplishing that purpose is not a joint venture. Accomplishing each individual purpose in life is not a joint venture. You have great part to play for your own personal destiny to be achieved. Everything that has to do with purpose in our lives is individually oriented or based. Listen, in birth, when we were born, it was individual. When we leave this earth, if rapture did not take place, that people will go at the same time, it will be individual. When blessings are coming, it has to do with individual participation. When cursing, cursing is coming, the same thing. When success is coming, the same thing. When failure is coming, it has to do with individual. So, and I say that you are an architect and you are a pilot of your destiny. You are the pilot. You are the one that is driving your life. So how safely or cautious you are towards safety will determine how you will arrive in life. Other people may contribute to your life on your way to your destiny or destination. But you have the greatest part to play as a pilot and architect of your own life. That's why the other day in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, the word of God says, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own, your own salvation. Work it out with fear and trembling. So that the one that works out your own salvation, nobody works it out for somebody. It has to do with individual. And 12, 37 of the book of Matthew says that by your word you shall be justified. By your word you shall be condemned. That's who we live in. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 18, God says something here. There was an amendment to a particular abbey that was said in Israel. God decided to amend such the adage. And it started by the book of Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. The word of the Lord came on to me again, saying, What be ye? Now you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel. He say, the fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, said the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion anymore to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the father, so also the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sinned, it shall die. He said, no, there's, there's going to be an amendment. That when the father eats so a grave, then it's not the father's teeth that will be on edge. That means the teeth of the son 
of the father that did not eat his last grape with beer, and the Lord was saying, no, 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 no. There's an amendment from now that even that same father that eat his last grape will be the one that is sick to be set on the edge, not the soul. For the soul that sits there, that same soul, not another soul, shall die. So we need to understand that our liability is individualistic. Your destiny is in your hands. It's not in the hand of anybody. Don't wait to blame anybody over your failure. No, don't, don't pass it. Don't even think about it. The sum total of your decision is the suffering of your destiny. The decision you take every day matters. They may not look relevant, but I want to tell you something. That decision you take every day is the sum total of what you call your destiny very, very, very soon. Every decision you take it or you are going to take it matters to your destiny. They are cumulatively what is called your destiny and what should be called your destiny in the future. Decisions are very important. And there's one truth I want us to build on this morning, especially on this message. That the oppositions are part of life arrangements. Your oppositions are part of the life arrangement that God has for you. So when you have this at the, at the, at the back of your mind, you should be able to build and even give room for opposition in anything you are doing. You should not be afraid of oppositions. You should not be afraid of, of people standing against what you say you want to do. Some people, they don't like challenges. They have phobia, they have fear for challenges. The moment they set and see challenges, they will presume that no, it's no good area. So our message this morning is coming to deal with that. A woman in the book of Mark chapter 5, verse 28, if you read that place, you see the woman that her, her, her sickness swallowed up her name. The word of God did not even bother to tell us the name of that woman. The woman was addressed by her problem. The woman of the issue of blood. That was her name. For 12 years, she was in that situation. And the word of God says she spent all her life savings we are totally spent on that sickness. Everything she saved ended up in that situation. And after spending, she was not better. So when they have no injection in town, when they now invented any injection, they would call her and say, Mother, come, let's test and see whether this thing will go. She became a testing ground. She was a guinea pig. And the woman, for 12 years, went through it. But that same woman, she prayed through the crowd in that same world. When Jesus was coming, the word of God said, when she heard and saw the poster that Jesus was coming for a crusade very close to her, she made up her mind and the word of God said, she made up her mind and said, if I may, but God, the help of his coming, I shall be made whole. She concluded it at home before she set out. She factored that she will not be having a very good passage to Jesus because she was having an issue of blood and in Israel, at that point in time, according to tradition of the Old Testament, such a person should not touch you, or you should not touch such a person. And that woman was not just known by people, she was notorious because of her case. So anyone that saw her knew her case. The crowd was much, but the woman broke the crowd. She broke the crowd. She entered the crowd. She tried to get beating her. She until she got to where Jesus was and was able to touch the hem of the garment of Jesus and power left Jesus. And Jesus shouted, Who touched me? And he said to say, Master, people have been talking you and you are asking who touched say, No, no. Somebody touched me with a purpose. Today, in faith, to touch Jesus with a purpose, receive it in the name of Jesus. And when the woman could not be hidden again, she came and said, I was the one that touched you. Everybody we are talking on you, but I touch you. And Jesus said, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. And that was it. The fountain of the blood that was coming out of that woman sees. I don't know where your issue or problem is coming, but I'm here to address the fountain of your problem. That today, every fountain of problem in your life, I say, Seize in the name of Jesus. And he 
Pharisees. And her name changed. Her real name was known. Any problem that has followed your name will not pass by today. Any problem that they know you with, any problem that has swallowed your original name today, they will give way in the name of Jesus. Same thing happened to the man called Batibius, the son of Tibius. In the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 38, when he heard that Jesus was passing along the street and he made inquiry and he heard Jesus, no positions were there. Making a noise, and if you talk again, we're not going to give you money. This stupid thing, give on to you, you will stop having them. And what about say he went and hired more micro microphones, he hired more a public address system and positioned himself where he could be heard louder. And he shouted the more and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I want to go say, When Jesus hear that one, he stood still. Today, Jesus will stand still on your behalf. Royalties 
and where he was in charge, taking control of a lot of countries and a lot of people on the on the earth, and he was sharing his his visions, his dreams onto his brothers. If you go there, that will not permit us because we want to run fast with this message. That will not permit us. We go to earth, Genesis chapter 37, 4 to 5. You want to go say the brothers hate me because he told them what God has made him to be. The moment you tell people what God has made him to be, hatred will come. And as he kept, God kept on revealing, he kept on telling them, and one of God said they hated him the more. But I want to tell you something. Man's hatred has nothing to do with God's manifestation. They can't stop what God wants to do because Romans chapter 8 verse 31 says, If God be for us, who can be against us? There's nobody that can stop what God has to do in your life. Or any man or woman that is standing up and say, Over their death body will they see you succeed. You will attend their funeral.
Psalm 23, verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My, thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Praise God. You prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. They saw the big table with delicacies. They saw royal deities and, and, and then they, they saw a lot of things in their presence to prepare a table my rock cup was running over in their presence. They are thirsty but they can they do not have anything. My own cup runs over. That would be your testimony. I said that would be somebody's testimony. That would be somebody's testimony. Hallelujah. Psalm 110, Psalm 110, verse 1 says, The Lord say unto my Lord, Sit down at my right hand. That I may make your enemies your footstool. Praise God. Don't you need footstool? You need footstool now. You can't sit comfortably where you have no footstool. That ties you are placing your feet there is why you are comfortable. If you sit down and your leg is dangling, you cannot be comfortable. The enemies are not there to destroy you. The enemies are your footstool. Say, my enemies are my footstool. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let your name and glory be glorified. 